In this video we're going to talk about schedule risk, the probability that a, that a uh, project won't complete by its deadline. Here we have a sample project. It's a software implementation. Task A is to gather requirements. That has to be done before anything else can be done. After that, then programming, hardware acquisition, and user training can proceed in parallel. Um, after hardware acquisition is finished and programming is finished, uh, the implementation proper can begin. Uh, after the implementation is finished, then there's testing. After testing and user training are complete, then the project is thought to have ended. Here's the data that have been given to us on this um, task, on this project. Um, we have three time estimates from subject matter experts for each one of the tasks. So for requirements uh, analysis, uh, they've estimated that at best we'll finish that in two weeks, at worst 14 weeks, and the likely time is six weeks. For implementation task E, they've uh, estimated at best it will take at least three weeks, at most seven weeks, and uh, the most likely is five weeks. Now, under the column heading predecessors, what we have here are the relationships we saw in the arrows before. So, task A can begin right away, but task B, C, and D can't begin until A has finished. Task E can't begin until both C and E have finished. And task F um, cannot begin until uh, task E and actually task D as well have both. Uh, I'm sorry, task F can't, can't begin until task E is finished. And then there's another task here that's not shown, which is kind of the end of the project, which happens when both F and, and D have finished. So D and F, when both of them is finished, have finished, the project is said to have finished. All right, the, the PERT recommendations from the original PERT, um, PERT uh, formulation here, Program Evaluation and Review Technique, PERT, uh, are to calculate the mean task time as the optimistic plus the pessimistic plus four times the most likely. To calculate the variance as the range squared divided by 36. And uh, then to estimate the probability of on-time completion by looking at only the critical path. So we find the critical path on the task, sum, uh, sum the task times, and that's our expected com uh, project completion time. We sum the variances, take the square root of the variances to obtain the standard deviation of the times on the critical path, of the sum of the times on the critical path. Then we assume that those tasks, the sum of those task times is normally distributed so that we can calculate a z-score from the uh, difference between the deadline and the expected completion time divided by the standard deviation and use the z-score uh, to look up the probability that the, ta that the project will finish on time. So here's our example of that. Let me um, pull up the spreadsheet where we've got all our data, data coded. Um, for task A, we have the optimistic time, the pessimistic time, and the most likely time. Then under expected duration, we've computed um, the uh, optimistic plus pessimistic plus four times the most likely divided by six uh, the per formulation to give us the expected duration. Uh, and then under variance, we have the range squared divided by 36. The critical path on this project is the sum of the tasks A, C, E, F. Those tasks add up to a longer path of the three paths that are there. That's the longest path. It makes it the critical path. It has the longest time, 2383, of all the three paths through the network. If we sum the variance of those four tasks, A, C, E, and F, it's 4 plus 3.36 plus 0.44 plus 0.44. We sum those up, then the total variance is 8.25. The due date, uh, we've promised the customer will have this ready in 25 weeks. So assuming that this 2383 is normally distributed, uh, we can calculate a z-score. The z-score would be 25 minus 23.83 divided by the square root of 8.25. That's a z-score of 0.41 and we can look up the probability this uh, project will complete on time, assuming that the, that the uh, critical path tasks are distributed according to a normal distribution, the sum of those task times are distributed normally, we will finish this project uh, with a probability of 65.8% uh, on time, which gives us a, uh, 
a probability of delay or a schedule risk of 34.23%. Now what I want to do is take this uh, set of uh, data, this data, and I want to keep every assumption that we've made so far about um, from the PERT model about how long the tasks will take, what their variance will be, and, uh, and change only one thing. The only thing I want to change is that we'll now look at um, the probability of being late because of any path being late, not just the critical path. So we'll, uh, we'll code this into a Monte Carlo simulation, we'll run the Monte Carlo simulation, and that will give us the probability that the project is late considering all the paths, not just the critical path. All right, so what we first have to do is um, generate some random variables. Uh, and our little model over here is going to have start times, the random variables for the task durations, uh, end time, and the end time of the end of the project, that'll be when the project as a whole finishes, we'll get a, we'll forecast that, we'll get a, a distribution for that. All right, task A can start at time zero. The task duration, and now we need to generate a crystal ball variable. We're going to assume it's beta, pert beta distributed, which is the original pert uh, assumption. So we find the beta pert distribution here, right here. And it says, okay, where are your parameters? Minimum, maximum, and most likely. So we'll plug those in. Minimum value can be found here. Most likely value can be found here. And the maximum value can be found, sorry, the maximum value can be found here. All right, there we have uh, my head inner. The uh, the distribution that the PERT, the Program Evaluation Review Technique, assumes task A will follow given those three uh, estimates from subject matter experts. Um, because of the way I entered those parameters, I can now just copy that down for all the other tasks. Right, the start time of, I'm sorry, I first need to calculate the end time for task A. The end time for task A is going to be the sum of the start time plus the task duration time. The start time for task B will be the end time for task A, um, as it will be for C and for D. Task E, on the other hand, finishes when B and C have both finished. So B finishes at that time, and um, C finishes at that time. So the maximum of those two, the one that finishes later, is the start time for E. Task F will start when task E has finished. And the end of the project, the final task in the project, will um, we'll start when D and F are finished. All right, now we can copy this formula down for the end time because it's going to be the same. The end time is always the task start time plus the task duration time. And then this uh, end time of the project becomes what we want to forecast. Alright, now just to make sure it all is running the way we think it should, let's uh, use our step function. Uh, sure enough, something went wrong. Distribution parameter error in parameter minimum, variable must be less than maximum. That would be a problem. 
Uh, so we can't really compute a task duration uh, for our uh, final task, which has no um, the times here are all zero. So that won't work for the beta program. So I'm just going to clear that. And we'll leave that there as a dummy task that takes zero time, that end of project node. All right, let's try it again. All right, what we have is uh, on this uh, iteration of the simulation, uh, the first task took 7.4 weeks, the next one 5.2 weeks, hardware acquisition took 7.8 weeks, user training took 15.8 weeks, etc. The, the project as a whole finished in uh, 23.5 weeks. Let's do that one more time. Uh, the second time through, the project finished in 22.9 weeks. So in both cases, the project finished on time. Let's go ahead and run the simulation and see uh, what our um, estimated schedule risk is according to the Monte Carlo simulation. Uh, there's several several uh, forecasts running in the background here. I'll minimize. get to the one that we really want, which is here. Okay, so this is the forecast we just created, per estimate of project finish. And we can see that on average, this finishes in 24 weeks, so on average it finishes on time, but if we ask ourselves what's the probability that this will finish in 25 weeks by the deadline, uh, then the answer is there's only a 55% chance that we'll finish by the deadline, and consequently a 1 minus 55% chance, um, or about a, a 45, 44.55 chance, 45% 40, chance that we will uh, finish late. Contrast that To the classic per estimate, which only examined one um, one path, one critical path. Classic per, per estimate said that we had a 34% chance of being late, keeping all of the same assumptions, but only changing the assumption that um, that it's only the critical path that can make us late, uh, allowing for the fact that. Uh, any of these uh, paths can make us late. We find that the, the probability of being late has jumped to 1 minus 55% or about 45%. So the classic PERT approach here underestimates the schedule risk by about 10%, which is about um, one-third of, um, of the current risk estimate. In the next uh, video, we'll look at other assumptions, changing other assumptions such as this beta PERT estimate and the sensitivity of schedule risk to distributional assumptions.